Uh, so let's start with uh, the the definition of gamification, Roman. And I ask this to every expert who comes to our webinar because each one gives a different answer. Yeah. So I would like you to define gamification, and then we'll start from there and build upon it. Okay. So um, I make it short. So for me, the the definition of gamification is that desi you're designing activities with the aim that people are continue uh, are. Uh, keep as uh, keep doing something with joy okay that's pretty simple it's for me it's not that i want to get people to do something in the first place uh, or only once because there are much easier ways to do that like nudging or whatever or rewarding for example classic bonies whatever points badges um so for me really it's about i i want to create something where people say okay i it's even if you wouldn't ask me i wouldn't mind to come back and keep doing what you gamified, right. okay? And of course, and that's the point. So, so, and and we are there are different ways to do that, okay? So, behavior psychology, I think, from my point of view, gamification is a niche within behavior psychology, and right. so it's much bigger. But when you're talking about gamification, there, of course, you take the role model of of evolutionary bi biology, evolutionary psychology, and you find out um, what are the mechanics, the situations. Uh, the principles in situations like game, sports, and hobbies. You're doing the research, and then you're trying to convert that kind of stuff into these activities that you want to design. Um, but, and that's, I think this is an important part from, especially for me, and I think this is also easy, easy to help for others to distinguish gamification with other approaches to get people to do something. From my point of view, gamification is less result driven and more activity driven. Okay, so what I mean by that is that if something is really uh, result-driven, let's say nudging, for example, probably most people who are familiar with gamification or behavioral psychology, they have heard about nudging. Yeah? Right, right. Um, so nudging wants you to do something particular, okay? Like I want you to eat an apple instead of candy, or I want you to slow down with the car. So the point is, if, you, if they achieve that, they don't care if, if you enjoy doing that. Yeah. Right. So if, and, and this is also something that it's important for us as a gamification designer. It means that we, if we are solving a prob problem from a company, for example, this, they say, for example, we want to decrease fluctuation or we want to increase the acceptance of our e-learning programs or whatever it is. Right. And um, if we are able to do so, but the people still say, Oh, if, if I wouldn't have to do it, I would still avoid it then we have failed. So even if we improve the KPI, I think as a gamification designer, you have failed. Wow, okay, so that <clears throat> that is, see, this is why I ask definitions because something always comes out unexpected. So what you're saying is, hey, don't only think about KPI, think about whether people are enjoying doing that thing. Sure, I, I, mean, I mean, first I of all, um, it's about this is why it's called gamification because we take games of the game industry as a role model. They didn't invent it, but they are very successful in doing that. So we take them as a role model. And you, the, the goal of a game designer is also not that you're finishing the end boss, but you don't enjoy the game. <laughs> you will never <laughs> reach. The, so that's not the case. And and that's the other point. I I think uh, we can all agree that it's difficult to create something for people that they are enjoying over a longer period of time. So right. it's not, if I, if it would only be about the KPI, why would I try to, to, um, to achieve also this extra constraint that they even have to enjoy it. Okay. Right. So then for example, I could go to nudging. It's much easier. It's much faster. It's less expensive. That would be much better just to improve the KPI. Right. Also, it, it in fact brings me to a very interesting question, follow-up question, is that a lot of people in this audience and even those who are going to watch it later on YouTube and other platforms, they will be from the group of people who already have tried nudging or might have heard about nudging from their colleagues. But one of the challenges why so many companies are coming to gamification now is because they find that nudging is not effective. So that is why they are being forced to think deeper about, hey, 
what can we do to make people want to complete this and not just uh, you know ignore our nudges this is a very real problem roman yeah definitely uh, the point is that in the first in the first place you have to ask yourself do you want to change a behavior only once or only for a very short period of time so perhaps you want to change it 10 times but only within two days and then you don't care about it anymore because it was for a conference or whatever or do you really want to create something over a longer period of time right and and this changes everything so if you can if you can answer that it's already i think for everyone probably pretty easy to understand that if it's like our our human na nature works right so if i want you to do something immediately it's really easy to trigger something like um urgent like urgency okay it has to be done now or like fear oh if you do don't do that you're losing this and this fomo or whatever right. it is and it, because by nature it was important to act like this in order to be able to survive 100,000 years ago right. um, and so we are built like this and it's it's pretty to be honest it's pretty simple to touch into this kind of 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 behavior yeah? and so but That's the problem is, or, yeah, yeah. The problem is, or it's not really a problem for the human, probably it's a good thing, um, that your target group get used to it. So you can use it once, you can use it twice. Uh, so, but then we realize we, we get used to the kind of mechanic that you're adding. Uh, so like fear, FOMO or urgency or whatever it is. And, and so um, if, you, if you want to use it over a longer period of time and we as a target group get used to it, we have to realize that we have to increase the intensity of this kind of mechanic. It's like, right. a, it's like a reward. If I say, hey, if you do this and you will get that, then probably you didn't. You, it was, it's a surprise for you. You said, oh, I didn't, I didn't um, um, expect that. Amazing. Okay, I will do that. You get your reward and you say, yoo perfect. Then for the second time, and I, I say, hey, if you do this, you get you get that. You say, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's, it's, sure, I will get that. I know it from the last time. And so it 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 changed from being a reward and experience as a reward. And and that's that's an interesting point. If you if you talk about games, and you're designing something because you say, hey, I want you to enjoy this game. This game has 36 levels. Probably we now by experience it will take you. It will you will need to I don't know play it for at least six months because this is the average yeah, time that you need to go through the whole game. And um, if you would say the whole time, if the whole game design would be around, uh, would be about, sorry, um, if you play this, you will get points in the game. No one would play the game. It's, it's, we never play for a reward. Progressing, overcoming challenges, failing, and um, discovering, um, and everything of that um, leads to the intrinsic emotion of, oh, I'm progressing. It's worth my time. I should do that again. Again, it's evolution, okay? Because like, 100,000 years ago, when we realized, oh, I'm doing something and I'm still living, okay, I should tell that my little kids. And so, yeah, they learned it, whatever. It, by evolution, it makes sense to spend your time um, only with stuff that makes it more probable, more probable, um, yeah. Or that increase the probability um, for your survival. That's yeah. that's nature, and that was true for the last yeah one hundred thousand years and one million years. And only because now it's easy for us to survive, actually, in our industrialized world. Yeah, for the last yeah. two thousand years, here it doesn't change. Okay, that's evolutionary speed. It, it takes much longer. And so, um, um, if you want to keep someone being interested and engaged in the long run. You have run, yeah. to trigger these intrinsic mechanisms, and they are much more about progress and experiencing progress within the activity. Even failing is experienced as a progress and not by achieving a result. So that's a very, very interesting perspective, Roman. So now what you're saying is, I think this is a takeaway. I, I should summarize this for the audience that think of the time frame that you have. And if if, if it's something that you expect people to do for a long time, then gamification in terms of making it challenging, making it uh, seem like progress is a great tool to use, great idea to use. 
-hmm. But if it's very short, if it's limited to let's say three days, five days, or even only once, you are saying that that's a different type of problem altogether, and it requires different type of tactics. Yeah, totally. Probably it doesn't require gamification even anymore. Got it. Got it. Um, if if that is so, could you touch upon? Uh, so you see nowadays a lot of. Uh, lot of brands when you come to their website even for the first time uh, of course they spent money showing you ads on google or facebook and so you clicked on it which means they lost money and you know you came to their website and now they need to get your address they need to get your email address or phone number so we see sometimes the application of something like a spin wheel or something like a similar gamification mechanic where they say hey don't leave don't leave without giving us your email address and in exchange for your email address uh, earlier they used to say we will give you a coupon but they realized hey people may not be interested in the coupon so now now they are thinking of i will give you a wheel to spin you know Yeah. And and if one of those sectors in the wheel has a very big price, like maybe an iPhone or yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or something, so how do you how do you see that? Because it's a one-time activity, and they're trying to catch you yeah. in that with the help of a game mechanic. Yeah, that that's true. Um, the point is okay. It's a one one time, as, as you say, it's a one-time behavior. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, make it extrinsic, perhaps it's easier, whatever. But there are still other solutions instead of only doing it like a, like a like a gambling, whatever. The point is, if you if you think about that, um, there are two thoughts about that. One is probably for ninety nine point nine percent of all the websites, the game wheel has nothing nothing to do with your website, with the brand, or with the content. It's just an icing. So the, it, it, that's not wrong. But the point is, of course, I would be much more interested to think about, can we integrate something as engaging as the game wheel that has a context to our brand? Because then it already pays into branding, loyalty, whatever. Okay, that's the first thing. The second right. thing is um, that what I, what I, the point is, of course, you can provide a price. Yeah, a bigger one, whatever. Of course, that's interesting. Yeah, we, I, I mean, this is, we don't have to discuss that. Everyone, um, no one would say, oh, I, oh, damn, I have won something. Yeah, But um, <laughs> the point is that if I say, hey, if you do this, you get something, or there's a probability that you will get something, that's the principles of bribery. Okay. And so you get the behavior of a bribe person. Mm -hmm. And if you say that's fine, <laughs> I don't care. Eh, totally fine. Yeah? But the point is, if you have a bribed person, we can, we can for sure say that the person is not loyal. That has nothing to do with loyalty. And we yeah. can also say that the value out of the interaction with your website is experienced by the bribed person with something that has nothing to do with the value that you are delivering, okay? So the point is, if you say, I don't care, I only want the email, and then I I will think, okay, how can I start and, and get the the, guy, uh, the person to be in get? If you say, I only want to have the email, and then we will go to zero and start over again. Okay, do it, okay? Um, but, and that's the point, first of all, um, you are missing already the potential of the first connection. And mm -hmm. second, everyone is doing that. I mean, that's the easiest way to do it. Okay. And so again, it's only the price. It's only if the wheel is amazing, looking, funny, sound like, whatever. I have no clue. Yeah. Well, how, well, how well it's been done. So if you look at games, and again, we're talking about gamification. So let's, let's take, yeah, the, the a perfect role model for that. Um, for example, We realize, and this is also behavior psychology, that's not only uh, especially for games, but we know that if people have the feeling of invested time and effort into something, it becomes more valuable. No, it doesn't right. matter that it is valuable. It's only because I invested something and time and effort. Sorry, that's the, the important part. 
only because I invested time and effort into something, I try to convince myself that this activity is good because otherwise I would have been just stupid <laughs> to invest time and effort into this. Uh, and so, right. for example, a good way to, to get an email, for example, to make it easier to get an email and at the same time connect it to the content and the context of the website is, for example, if you offer them something. So if you, let's imagine you are, uh, uh, let's imagine you are a food website, okay? And you have receipts for healthy food or whatever it is. And um, because we just, for example, we just have the, the, this kind of customer. So, and then you want to have a lot of emails for newsletters or for to send them a present or for whatever it is. Yeah? It doesn't matter. So, for example, you know, okay, they are looking at our website probably because they're interested about wealthy food. Okay, so fitness could be a subject that's also interesting for them. And so, right. for example, you could say, hey, what are the, you're, you're asking three, four different questions, okay, where they have to think a little bit about, okay, what do you want right. to achieve? How much do I support? Whatever it is, okay? So, and then because of the four questions they answered, you are giving them something like, oh, because of that, you are this type of health person or fitness person or whatever. Kind right. of. But now, if you want to have this nice graphic where you showed like it is, and if you want to know what we would suggest as your first receipt to cook, because we are food receipt website, we need your website. And so it's a, uh, sorry, we need your email. And, and email, so yeah. it's a no brainer. Okay. Because, oh, I invested time in it, effort in it, I get a result. I would lose anything if I wouldn't give the email. And the so they have an Got achievement. It. You haven't, you have done something for them. They didn't think, okay, he sold us his receipts. Yeah. We can, he's only, he's, he's only selling receipts. So he doesn't earn anything if we are, if we have a fitness program, but he's even giving us information about that. Okay. So right. it's, it's like, um, prosity. Yeah. Also behavior psychology. So if yeah. you do something, Others are more, much more likely to say, okay, now I owe you something. And these mechanics, so that's, that's much more, I would, it's behavior psychology. I wouldn't say it's, it's not gamification. It, it, it uses similar mechanics. Okay. Gamification also relies on this kind of, I've put effort into something. It's not really nudging. It's classic biased. It's classic behavior psychology. And much, much from my point of view, a much more sustainable approach to solve that problem. No, it's a it's a fantastic. Uh, I love the way you analyzed it, as and com compared it with the the idea of a bribe and starting with zero after that, which is a point I think uh, many of us would do well to remember because that's unfortunately the truth of the whole thing, and the just the spin that you've put on this whole uh, idea by suggesting that hey ask them questions or put them in a situation where they have to think, invest yeah. time, invest their brains, and then you give them an answer that they would care about and they would not like to lose. Yeah. And, and then say, hey, but I cannot send this answer to you if I don't have your email ID. Yeah, it's, it's a no-brainer, right. right? Sure. Yeah. yeah. So it, uh, it's, uh, it's lovely how the, the whole thing is planned. Right, it, it's done with a intention. It's done with a certain amount of care, also for the user. We are not just using you. It, there is an interaction going on here. Yeah, exactly. And that's a that's a very important thing. In fact, I think this already would provide a very useful idea to some of our listeners. I'm very sure of that because this is a very common problem for a lot of people. Uh, it's just the way. With the website traffic works, you know, yeah, hundreds and thousands of uh, visitors and very less uh, conversions in terms of email IDs. Yeah. So let's let's uh, move on to another topic, uh, Roman, which is about. Uh, and this is actually related to what you said, uh, the idea of motivation, intrinsic or extrinsic. Yeah, and so one of the ways that I have started thinking about gamification over time is just in terms of two things. One is what kind of motivation am I going to target, mm -hmm. intrinsic or extrinsic, mm -hmm. and what kind of mechanic will help me to, to connect with that part of the user, right? Okay. Whether it's a spin wheel or, so do you also think like this or do you have a different way of thinking about it? Especially when you have to help somebody who comes to you and says, uh, Roman, here is my app. 
we need your help in gamifying the app uh what are the variables that you think in terms of so the first of all i never probably so the point is i never think about is it do we need extrinsic or intrinsic in general okay because okay. the point is if i do something it's only about intrinsic okay mm -hmm. I, i never take a project where i would say it's easier for you if you do extrinsic motivation there are some places and advantages for that yeah but that's not my business but and that's the point you can't create so at least i can't perhaps it's possible i don't know but i can't create intrinsic motivation without the help of extrinsic in the first place okay so oh. that means you always have to the point is you can only be intrinsic motivated about something if you have already experienced it so the point is yeah. in the first place i have to get you to experience that Yeah. And so I, of course, I can, I can go back to extrinsic because the point is here, I'm not thinking about how can I gamify the old app because that is a long term period of time. Yeah. And then it's, it's intrinsic. Now it's only, I want you to experience this one feature, for example, the first one. And so how can I, then my question is always, okay, how can we use an extrinsic mechanism to get you to use this feature because we want you to experience this kind of feature in a particular way where we, believe that it's the easiest for us after that to move you and to change our designs so we can after that we can design the extrinsic mechanism out of the system and introduce the intrinsic design got it yeah got it and so this is always the same when what we do as um what our our first question always is um So, and it, yeah, so for some projects, you don't need it really to ask that. But most often it's about, are we looking for explicit or implicit gamification? Okay, so explicit mm -hmm. gamification means that you know that you are within a game right now. Okay, so serious games, game-based learning, a game wheel, whatever. It's like, okay, it's this would be my job or this would be the app, but now we pause it and now I can. It's like if, if I want to train you on the job. Yeah, if you, if you have to learn like, to avoid phishing emails, for example, the explicit way would be that I would create a game where you can sit down and you be a person within the game and you have to avoid that your company is being attacked by phishing emails or you are the villain who is using phishing emails to attack another competitor or whatever it is. Okay. But you know exactly that. Okay. I'm sitting down as an employee. You know that. Okay. Now it, I pause the work. I'm sitting down and I'm playing games. That's explicit. Okay. And the implicit way would be that you're introducing the learning of a phishing mails into his real life situation of answering real emails in real time. So there is no distinction between your work and a game. You just improve right. the actual. And so no one knows that he's playing a game actually, or that he's being, you, uh, ex, um, 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 that now game mechanics are being used. And there are advantages right. and disadvantages of both systems. Yeah. And so we have to analyze what's better, what fits the situation, what's the budget, there's different ways to do that. And exactly. So that's actually the first question that we're always trying to answer. So explicit versus implicit. Yeah. Should we create a situation based game where you dedicate your time, you pause your work, get into the game, play it. Uh, but then you know that it's a game uh, versus in the flow of your work you are given feedback or you are given additional challenges or additional help however whatever it is whatever fits but the point is we whatever want to fits. improve reality yeah, and not to provide a uh, another activity for 10 minutes that's more fun and then you have to go back that's not the case got it got it i, I think uh, i obviously do not know but i think that the implicit part sounds a lot more interesting because yes. <laughs> it does. Uh, i know it, it, it just could be my own personal preference talking here but i think also a lot of companies might prefer uh, that kind of thing especially uh, i think one of the areas where they would prefer is an industry like fintech mm -hmm. uh, banking maybe yeah. you know yeah uh, and and i think these days I don't know how it is in Germany, but I think it's not wrong to say that all over the world, banks are facing a lot of competition from smaller, faster moving companies uh, who are 
heavily doing gamification. I heard about insurance companies who gamified, uh, not sorry, insurance companies, personal finance management companies yeah. who gamified investments. They taught young people how to invest by telling them, hey, if you spend, uh, if you are buying a sandwich for eight euros yeah. and you, you give the shopkeeper 10 euros and they give you back two, you can invest those two euros. Yeah. And so they get you to start. Uh, would you call that as implicit? Does that sound like implicit? It, it, it would be implicit. I don't know if it's implicit gamification, but it's implicit. Yeah. So the it's idea implicit. is right. Um, it's yet you're right. The companies are always fascinated about the implicit way. Okay, because it means that oh, they can they are being gamified while they are worry, uh, uh, working. Working, yeah, so yeah. that's amazing. And of course, uh, also from my meaning in my job is if I don't want to create something in addition to your work, like a game, I want to improve your work. And um, so I'm much more in the implicit way. But the problem is, and that's that that's that's reality to say it this way. Even if they are more excited about the implicit way, the problem is that it's being designed into the system of the work of your self software, and it's it's lying beneath the surface. So it's right. like it's psychology. It works, but indirectly. The problem is that most projects and most project owners or whatever or companies that are using that, they want to see it. So the point is, I uh, we have the point is. I, It's not long ago. We had a customer and he said, he, we really talked about the whole, for, for almost two or three weeks, we worked on the concept. He was totally with us on the implicit way. And then suddenly he realizes, oh, wait a minute. In six months, I have to show the project to my boss. So I will have around 20 minutes. I, I, I got this kind of budget. Um. Boy, he, he, he won't get it in 20 minutes. It's too, too indirect. And so what happens at the end? He wanted to create a real game, a virtual reality game, not because it was the best decision to do, but he knew that if I have 20 minutes and I give the virtual reality game to my boss, he can sit down, he put it on, he says, wow, amazing. Okay. And that's all. So the decision was okay. made for the best result or impact. The decision was made for, What's the most probable way for me as a project manager to be promoted? Got it. <laughs> But that's a different kind of motivation at work. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's, it's a system. I can't blame him. Yeah? Don't blame the player, blame the game. Right. So probably I think that, that gives us a, a great tip uh, in order to push a gamification project uh, for approval. Uh, I think Would it make sense to set the expectation from the beginning that, hey, this is going to be subtle, this is going to be uh, below the level of awareness, you will not see a game-like thing, but it will work like a game? Is it good to set that expectation up front with the bosses? From my point of view, yes, because we are focused on this implicit intrinsic part. This is what we enjoy in doing. And because this, are, this these are projects that last for months, okay? And that's also much more interesting. Um, right. um, but it's also much more difficult. So you have to find a way to say, so sometimes we just have to say, okay, it's no way that we will be able to do the project like we want to do it or we think it's right. Then you have to think about, are you doing it anyway? I have to admit that in the beginning, in the first few years of my company, I needed projects. I needed budgets. So I said, okay, we are doing this. Nowadays, of course, it's much easier for me to say, um, do you know what? You want to do this kind of gamification? Then we have someone for you who is specialized in that, but we don't do that. Got it. So you, you become a lot more selective because now you can afford to be yeah. selective. Sure. Perfect. And, and that shows that, that there is real progress and real growth. Uh, I have one question for you, Roman. Um, a lot of people say, hey, the task that I want my users to do right right now, today, is pretty boring. Let's just be honest. Yeah. Um, an example could be uh, insurance salespeople. They mm -hmm. go meet a lot of prospective clients on the street. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, their sales manager is sitting in another location. 
and they want to see the details of all the meetings that the insurance uh, salespeople had. But unfortunately, that's a painful task to mm-hmm. enter all the details, uh, to, to be truthful yeah. <laughs> about what happened in the conversation. Yeah. Because my job could be on the line if I tell the truth. So when there are tricky situations like this, how do you break it down? How do you begin to have a sense of, hey, this is not so bad if we begin to think this way? That's a good way. Actually, we wouldn't break it down. We would expand it. Okay. What I mean by that is um, it's, so first of all, I think there's one rule that I really learned the, I learned the hard way over the last 12 years is that if we're talking about an activity that is repetitive and monotone, mm-hmm. and with monotone, I mean easy, okay, that's repetitive and easy. The best way to motivate people is extra, is the extrinsic way. Okay. Um, so only if there's cognitive effort involved in it, then the mm-hmm. extrinsic way becomes much less effective. I mean, this is not being, I, I experienced that, but that's not being uh, evented by me. Um, this is the self-determination theory of the Jin Ryan or Dan Pink of, of this famous TED talk. So it's not, that's not my, uh, but I experienced, I can totally agree with that. So the point is now, if we are talking about an activity that is repetitive and easy to do, and we want to gamify, we want to build on intrinsic motivation. Um, but we can't do it because it's only repetitive and easy. What we ha- And if you break it down in little steps or whatever it is, it's still repetitive and easy. But what yeah. you can do is you can change perspective from the point of the user it's himself. So we have a saying, and, and we say, I, I say um, soccer or football is gamified running. Okay, what I mean by that is that most people don't like running, okay? It's just boring. But if you give them a, a football, they run 10 kilometers yeah, and have fun, okay? The point is that they don't realize the running anymore. They're not focusing on the running. They are focusing on the bigger picture. Yeah? And it's not just, okay, I have, to, I have to make a goal. It's more like, okay, what's my role here? Oh, there are so many roles that I can, um, that I can fulfill for my team. There are so many skills that help me to become better. And so it becomes more complex. It becomes more cognitive. And the one, the one little repetitive monotone activity like running, you just don't realize it anymore. Okay. Yeah. So it's always a journey. So if, if it would be about, okay, you should put data into something and you don't like it, I would design, I would, I would try to design a journey where the focus of these guys is on the bigger picture. So, and putting the data into the system. It's just part of my personal progress to the bigger picture. Uh, right. And, and suddenly it becomes your tool. Uh, it's, it's, it's not a, it's not an, an awful or whatever. Yeah. Tedious activity. It's, it's part not a responsibility of anymore. Yeah. To become better. Uh, and so, and, and I didn't change the job actually, but I, I'll help to change the perspective of the user himself and make it bigger. So I expanded it. And so now suddenly it can work. Fantastic. Um, at this point, I want to ask the audience to type into the chat what your favorite gamified app is, because I, for one, I'm interested to know what that is. I'm sure Roman would enjoy looking at a few apps. Uh, so feel free to do that while we continue talking. So coming to gamified apps, Roman, do you use gamified apps? And if you do, what's your favorite one and why? No, we we only build so the, we only build individual solutions. Do you, do you personally use? I mean, you personally um, do you uh, use personally? It? Yeah. Um. So let's say this way. I don't know. So I'm I'm not using the. No, what I'm using, for example, are apps like Runtastic, okay, where everyone says, "Hey, they are using gamification." Um. I, I think they are, it's right. They're using gamification. The point is it's not gamification because they're using points or badges or whatever, or leaderboards, yeah? because from my point of view, that's not gamification. Um, but what they really do is, or what they help me, they help me to understand what different kind of categories and skill I ca- skills I can become, I can become better at. And then they help me to realize progress. 
They help me to realize failure, but help me then to understand how to overcome the failure. So that's also learning progress. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think they are pretty good in doing that kind of stuff, for example. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any, any other names come to mind? What do you think of Google Pay's uh, effort at scratch cards? And uh, I don't know what else they do in Germany, but in India, they created a sensation during one of our festivals. Uh, Diwali, you might have heard of it. Uh, the, the festival where we light uh, oil lamps and it, it's very pretty. And so they ask people to, to collect those uh, oil lamps, virtual oil lamps. Every time you make a payment, you get one of those, but it could be a repetitive one. So you have to complete a set of, I think six or eight of them. And it became crazy because people were communicating with each other. Hey, I have all these extra lamps. Can you take one of these and give me what I need? And it became a huge hit. So what, what do you think of, or can you give some other examples or feel free to answer this? Uh, sure. So, so first of all, of course, collecting. And um, the point is, how difficult is it to collect the kind of stuff? Yeah? So the one could be, so I think if it's easy to get all the, the lamps in your example, it's just a reward program. If you make it challenging, yeah, if there's scarcity, if you have to per, per, perhaps yeah. even to create a skill to um to 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 argue with others and whatever then it's it's already tapping into the into gamification from my point of view okay it's it's using yeah. that and you are more proud about the progress that you made in order to be able to get the card instead of the actual card itself um and so that's 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 totally fine um it, um it's a good point actually so um here in germany i i, I mean we could also say that a, a huge problem also from my point of view for the gamification industry is that in media, most reward programs are being called gamification. Yeah. And, and so, um, and, um, the problem is that most reward programs are you getting a stamp for every coffee you bought or Starbucks, Starbucks stars or whatever. The point is the only challenge, the only effort you have to do is to spend money. So that's really, that has nothing to do with the game-like experiences that we have in games. And, and so, um, that's a huge problem. And also, for example, the, the Monopoly, the famous Monopoly game from McDonald's. Yeah. It's, yep. I think it's famous worldwide, right? Um, and again, it's like, it's more like entertainment, for example, instead of trying to involve you, uh, or to trying to create an, a journey that unfolds over time in front of you by being a McDonald's customer. Yeah. That would be gamification. Like a, a game story unfolds on, in front of you over time, depending right. on your decisions. And, um, um, so that's, a, I, I, oh, yeah, I'm doing some gamification. I'm doing some gamification probably that every one of you is also doing. And um, I love these kind of examples because it shows for me the, 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 the smartness of nature. I don't know. Um, for example, can you remember the last time when you, let's say you walked home from work or you, you, uh, you're going on a walk with your family or whatever? I don't know. And you are being bored or you're talking to someone on the phone. Yeah. Uh, and while you're talking, you have to wait. So you're, you're being bored a little bit. You say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you realize that suddenly you stop trying to step on the cracks on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> so if you, if you go, if you have so, so stones and then you try only to step on the stone and not on the crack. Yeah. Or if yeah. you are waiting on a traffic light and you are trying to, to do a countdown from 10 to zero and to, and when you say zero, you hope that, okay, green. Yeah. It's going for red. So exactly. So these kind of mechanisms and I, I'm, I'm now that I'm doing that a lot. Okay. Uh, uh, uh suddenly try to, so I'm, I'm on a bicycle and suddenly I'm trying to avoid a, 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 a something on the ground or whatever it is. So I'm, I'm starting to drive slalom. And the point is, these kind, it's, it's an amazing mechanism of nature from my point of view that nature realizes, and with nature, I mean the brain in this case, yeah, it realizes that, okay, this activity, it's so boring it's not actually worth my time. I'm not using my capacity. I'm not learning. I'm not increasing the probability to survive. Okay. It's still the evolution thinking. So by starting to play this little game of, okay, now I'm not stepping on the cracks anymore, uh, on the cracks on the ground anymore. Um, you are using 
one, two, three, four, I don't know, but something right, bits per second more in your brain. And so it 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 has oh, at least a little bit more bits. Yeah? And so it tries to challenge itself because by nature, it's a good thing to do. And so, and, and this is where the intrinsic motivation comes. It's built in right. to us yeah, to be challenged. And this is something that I realize sometimes, sometimes it's really, it's I'm doing that without realizing that. Yeah? But, or if you, if you, for example, traveling by car with your kids behind you and my, my, and then suddenly yeah, your son or your daughter starts to, 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 to go with a finger. So this on the, on the window and then I ask him, what are you doing? And then, oh, there's my little figure and she's jumping above the buildings outside or whatever. Yeah, because it's just boring sitting in the car. And so she develops its own little game to avoid the buildings and to jump over it or whatever. This is gamification built that, into you know, our culture. It, it reminds me that uh, sometimes, even now, <laughs> I use that idea to, you know, uh, if I have to dispose of a piece of paper, I... I don't want to walk up to the dustbin and put it in the hand. I would rather crumple it and try to, you know, dunk it from from here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's we need that so, kind of stuff. The problem is we are designing. We are on our way, and we're doing that already since the industrial industrial um, in the, uh, century, from my point of view. But we are we keep doing to design jobs that are more boring than they need to be, and because of that we are much more looking for these kind of, let's say, distractions or activities that we think, okay, it challenges us a little bit more. So looking for efficiency in our workplace is the best way to design intrinsic motivation out of the system. Got it. Which, which essentially, I think the, the whole force of your logic is find ways to involve the person. Don't don't keep them out of the activity. Uh, yeah. Use their use their involvement to make it fun for them, right? Yeah. And the point is, and this is, but it's also um, a th uh, the mind our about our mindset about uh, the image of man. Okay. The the point is that we believe, and that, that's I think that's the problem. We believe people want to have it easy, fast, and want to be rewarded. And because we believe that's the case, we're designing jobs ar uh, around this kind of belief. But now, if you really observe humankind everywhere on earth, no matter if a man, a woman, uh, no matter what kind of culture, what kind of age, whatever, if they are really allowed to do what they want to do, they are not doing something that's easy to do, that's fast, and that's being rewarded. They are playing games. Playing games means, hey, congrats, the next level is harder than the one before because you progressed. Yeah? We are our own hobby. I mean, if you're collecting stamps, if you're building airplane models, whatever, you're always trying to become better, 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 better. So we are challenging right. ourselves. And I think um, that's really the important thing. So in, so as you said, creating a human-centered design, from my point of view, does mean I help you to achieve or to, to reach the end as fast as possible. Because right. this is not what I'm looking for. I want to be involved in an activity that is worth my time, that needs my skills. Yeah? And um, so if something is easy to do and fast over, probably it's not, my time, uh, not worth my time the next time. So I'm looking for something else. Got it. Roman, we have a question yeah. uh, in the Q&A section from uh, Somalia. He says, when designing games, we progressively increase the difficulty uh, to make things challenging for players. And hardcore gamers love taking on challenges, tougher challenges to get better. But when I'm trying to gamify my app or website to maximize the number of conversions, uh, I would be apprehensive or scared uh, to make it difficult because I am not necessarily targeting gamers and, you know, a lot of people could drop off, right? Yeah. How could you approach it? Perfect. So first of all, uh, he's right. And um, the second is, even if you would target gamers, no one wants to have it difficult uh, in, um, to get... Um, a conversion or to do, to do something. So when I'm deciding, I go to Amazon because I want to buy something. Okay. I already have the result in mind. So right. um, I want to, and, and I don't probably don't want to, uh, don't want um, spend too much time on that because 
Real life is also in the way. Yeah. So let me give it back. The point is, it's not about taking one particular activity, looking at it only by itself, and then make, say, hey, we make, have to make that difficult. The point is, it, at this moment, he's looking for conversions. Okay. But the overall purpose of the website probably is to solve a problem, to make someone better, to help someone, whatever it is, okay? Right. So every tool that we are looking for has to make us better in achieving something. So getting into the conversion is just one little part out of that. So he has to look at it as, okay, that's the start of my journey and not after I'm being converted, it's the end, okay? So always mm -hmm. think about it's not about how can I make a better product, a better website. It's always how can I make um, the user better or uh, experiencing becoming better in using my software as a tool to solve a bigger problem. Okay. And so, in, in the, and this is why I always say you have to look at the whole journey, start from the end and design it backwards. Yeah. And got it. Exactly. But of course, um, um, logging in or uh, checking out, uh, this is something that shouldn't, uh, sh I think this is something you shouldn't try to give you. <laughs> yes, because uh, they're meant to be super short. Great. One question from a practical uh, point of view is that a lot of people, at least the, the kind of people that I've come across, uh, even, I don't know, in your case, Many times they have already designed a product. Yeah. They realize that something about their product is stopping them from becoming successful. Yeah. Uh, people are dropping off. There are not enough uh, conversions, etc. Right. KPIs are suffering, let's say. So they take that product as is and come to you and say, Roman, help us fix this. Yeah. What's your take is your take hey let's drop that and start thinking from scratch or <laughs> let's take a look at it and see what can we change and bring in some implicit gamification into it uh, to be honest that would be the first what you said is that if we say hey stop it and let's start from the beginning that would be <laughs> the most amazing way to do that yeah? to be honest i have achieved that once one of my customers he said okay let's start over again that's amazing um, normally it's not possible. Yeah. Um, the, the point is, um, of course, it's much more difficult because you have already built the whole system. And now, and this is why most companies are only looking for the icing on top of it. So they say, hey, it's already yeah. built. Please put a lay on it. And so this is why they, at the end, end up with points and badge system because they are easy to implement it, being implemented. Put yeah. on top, right. Yeah. Right. They don't help most often, but it's easier to do. Um, I think... The interesting thing is, most often, if people have already designed a, a, a software or an app, it's not that they say, hey, the whole system is broken. They say this one feature doesn't work. Like, for example, we had here, it's about conversions. Okay. And so then what we often do is we start, if it's, re we try to convince them that we have to build a um, holistic system. Okay. The journey, we have to look at every step in the journey. And then suddenly we see, oh, the conversion. It's just a little part of it. And if we design it next to this one or in the context of this one, it's a no-brainer and people are doing that. Okay. But if you, if you, if it's not possible, if you have to look at, if you have to look at every feature in, how to say that? Um, so, so, um, um, disconnected to the whole journey. Yeah. Like if you would say, okay, it's about conversion. So how do I get the one click that brings me a conversion? The point is, and this is most often the case. You can ask yourself a question. Is it important that people do, uh, enjoy doing the conversion? No, you want the conversion. You don't care if they enjoy it in this particular moment. Okay. And so then we say, okay, that's cool because if it's not important that they enjoy it, but if it's, if you have to make it just easier for them to do it, we have to think about nudging and nudging, for example, is much easier to implement on an already built system. Hmm. Okay, because there you can much more work, you can, you can much better work with interfaces, with classic UX design, um, or for example, with extrinsic stuff like points or whatever it is. I don't know. It depends on the context, but that's much easier. And most often, and that's the point, most often companies 
They don't want to go the last mile to make something enjoyable. They don't just want to have right. the result. And sometimes that's also the right way to do, but not always. Perfect. We have another question. In fact, the first question was from uh, Danilo Vaknenko. I hope I got your name right. I'm sorry if I didn't. Um, he's, he's thanking you, Roman, for... white papers, etc. Um, okay, if it's only about one, and that's, so, so I'm, 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 I'm teaching at universities gamification also in Switzerland and Germany and so on. And, and of course, the students are also asking this kind of question sometimes even before the course. And if I, it's only about one resource I have to give them or I should give them, the first thing I would always recommend is a book. It's called A Theory of Fun from Ralph Koster. Um, because he, he's a game designer from my point of view. And he's, he's not just a game designer. He's also, even, he's even a philosoph <laughs> from my point of view, a little bit like he's talking. He knows a lot about neuroscience, about behavior psychology. And his book is from my point of view, the best starting point because it doesn't talk about what you can see on a screen. Yeah. You know, or it, it's not about pixels. He talks about, okay, what happens inside a brain of Got a it. human if you're playing a game and what's important there. And, and so he starts from this end. And from my point of view, um, that's the best way to get started. Great. And we have a question from Shivaram. He says, I'm interested to see how gamification on finance and health related issues. Uh, I am unsure how to approach or move, in other words, motivate individuals to long term wellness in finance and health. And how can gamification be used to achieve this? Because I think probably the spirit of his question is these are two incredibly difficult areas where you can bring change in people because mm -hmm. they're very set in their ways of yeah. how they go with finance or with health and how how can gamification help in creating real world impact in these areas yeah cool good question um, so first of all, um, I don't know the names of these kind of approaches, but there are some, especially in health, there are already some amazing um, examples. Like for example, um, in 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 kids that have diabetes and how to get them to check their blood um, every day and then to get the the injection, whatever. And what they do, and the problem with finance and with health both is that um, the result. The, 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 the progress can be seen only in the future. It's, it's, it's far ahead. It's difficult to see progress in real time. But again, by nature, our brain is built for short term uh, feedback. Okay. It's not about, you, you only want to know that, okay, it's, oh, there's something in the, behind the tree. I have to run in order to survive. <laughs> and so, oh, I survived. Okay. Uh, you're not, oh, I should, I should save some energy. No, I'm walking away slowly. And then there's the saber tooth tiger and it's over. <laughs> okay. It's, so it's always about short term and we are still handling this part. So for example, a good way to do this, and it, 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 it's depending on your target group, for example, is if you are creating stories and stories are very uh, amazing way to help people to aim for long-term strategic result in the future, but it makes it easier for you to realize, experience, feel progress in the short term because how, how you're going through the journey. Yeah. And so, um, there are some examples, as I said, so for example, with the kids with diabetes, it's, it's not about them and they have to test themselves. It's about a story. And by doing the diabetes stuff, they are helping the hero of the journey to go forward. Okay. And wow. so this, this, for example, and the point is, this storytelling is, 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 is impactful, is working for, for eight years old and for 88 years old. So it, it has nothing to do with it, with the age. Of course, perhaps the, the design style, the right. wording, that's, this is something you have to change. Okay. Um, but, um, story is an amazing way to do so. And because they're not because we laugh as, uh, that once upon a time, blah, blah, blah. It's really that, it, it's just a, it's just a tool that helps you to break down 
uh, goal that's far away in the future and much too difficult to comprehend for our brain and to break it down into the next second, next minute, next day. And so um, using these kind of mechanics is the best way to go. So from my point of view. Perfect. One question from my side, Roman, uh, and this is also something that I encounter a lot in conversations with clients and prospects is, is it good to start with a library of templates or ideas that have already worked in my industry? Suppose I come from e-commerce or I come from banking, do I start with doing a research of what my competitors or people like me are doing? Do I start with a library of ideas or do I start from first principles? Oh, that's a good question. I would say um, it, yes and no. <laughs> okay, the point is that, um, let's say it this way, as an entrepreneur, no matter if it's about gamification, if you're doing your business, and I have four different companies right now. The point is, it's, of course, it's interesting to look at the compet competitors because you want to know what, uh, do they do something that I'm missing, whatever. The problem is, and this is also something that I learned from behavioral psychology, the problem is, if you look at others, it's much more likely that the solution you come up with is more similar than the one of the others. Okay, so if I'm thinking from an entrepreneurial point of view, and um, to create something with an USP, never look at the others. Never look at the industry. Okay, that's the first thing. Another thing is um, that, but on the other side, of course, and this is why I said no and yes, um, of course, if you know what others are selling, then probably you know that get, uh, customers can understand it because otherwise they wouldn't be selling it. They would right. be able to. So you, it helps you to find the wording, to find how to approach. So it's difficult. Yeah. Um, and another thing is, so from my point of view, it's, it's very individual. It's, it's, it's depending on the context that you're gamifying. It's about where are you coming from? And, and so there's, there are so many different ways to apply gamification and to apply behavioral psychology. I mean, 90% about gamification is behavioral psychology. And the interesting that once there was a guy who said that in engineering, the, the opposite of a good uh, solution is most, is, is terrible. Yeah, because physics or whatever. Um, in psychology, the opposite of a good idea is probably also a good idea. So it's, there are so many ways to, to approach it. And what I, I can, so I can only say how it worked for us. Um, I learned about gamification, but not by looking at gamification. Back then there was no gamification. Yeah. Um, I, I learned from neuroscience, evolutionary biology, behavioral psychology. This is what was what I was really interested in. And this is how I what this is how, what I transferred into my profession of a gamification side. And by then, by by of course, in the beginning, it was very I don't know the first slides probably I, it's good case I I can't look at them anymore. But probably it was just uh, by chance I put some stuff on it and went out to the customer and tried to to sell it whatever. But not, of course, then over the years you are experiencing what works, what doesn't work, what is understandable, and out of that you're creating your own methods, your right. own models. And so um, it's the problem is if you're working by following a model, a method, a methodology, and the worst thing it's then it's not a methodology from yourself. Yeah. But then the worst thing, if you're doing that, it, it's, it's the methodology is always built in a particular by someone in a particular context that made sense for him in this context. The probability right. that the context you are now in is that it's totally different is so high that using or following blindly the methodology, um, yeah, is, is probably won't work. So of course, ha take something as inspiration. I have my own methodologies. Yeah. Of course, I'm proud of them. I'm sharing them. If you really should take them and say, Hey, we are using the Roman methodology and now we are. I'm not so sure if that's, if that's a good idea. Um, and so, so I, yeah. In fact, that, that brings uh, this idea that don't just look at what competitors are doing, yeah. but also evaluate their context and compare your context to their context. If there is similarity of context, then maybe you can, you can, there is more likelihood for those ideas to have value to you. 
but if if the context is different then i think a copy paste is only going to cause damage <laughs> uh, yes. unintended consequences yeah definitely and i, I mean there's it, because it's psychology it's also neuroscience a neuroscience level we are all the same so on my chemical process here yeah that's happening on this level is exactly the same that yours so if you're right. using mechanics that are targeting this kind of stuff you yeah it will work here and it will work on your place but then if that's just the base now when we right. go one step forward we are we are going to the psychology level and of course how you uh, your culture your economical um processes in your company whatever it is how you behave yeah what's friendly in your culture was friendly in my culture whatever it's so different that um you have already to adjust your style your stuff your learning your knowing into this and so my methodologies of course they can't adapt to your kind of culture and psychology or much worse than of course to mine here Yeah, because they were built here in this kind of context. Got it. Okay, so I think we are coming to the end of the session. Uh, it's one hour already. It didn't feel like that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Do you have any last last words of wisdom that you want to? That's, that's <laughs> of wisdom. The, um, I, okay, yeah, I have one thing, and, and this is something that I'm already saying for 12, 13 years now. But it's still the same. I'm still convinced about that. Um, never, if you think about a gamification system, um, never think about rewards. Okay, we have a saying that says. So we have. A, so, so I came up with a sentence. He said, "Reframe rewards as resources." The point is, in a game, for example, you're not proud about getting 10 coins, but you're proud about getting the sword. And with the sword, you're looking for, oh, what can I do with that? How can I improve? We, providing, so, so most often we are trying to, and this is what I meant with image of man uh, with, uh, when I talked about that, is that we think they want to be rewarded. Science proves proves that wrong, but economy is still um, 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 not looking at that. The point is, it's not about, it's much easier to motivate someone to give first. So I give you something so that you can, and not about do something and then you will get, okay? And so if you points and badge, if you look at points and badges, for example, because everyone is talking about that, okay, in gamification, I, I, unfortunately. If you look at that from a game designer perspective, they it's the last one or two percent of the design when they're talking about, okay, if do we need points in order to provide feedback? Okay, it's the last, the last part they think about. But in gamification, it's always about, Oh, do you know what? We are providing a leaderboard. They're getting points and they can redeem it. And it's, it's something totally different. It's bribery. Yeah. We talked about that at the beginning. Yeah. And so this is really the first thing. Try to design something that you never need to provide points and badges and leaderboards. Then you're fine. Then you can still add it as an addition to improve something. But just because they are there, you won't design a good gamification. Yes. Yeah. In fact, we we have a similar line of thinking where we say, if at all you need to give something back to the user as a form of thank you, then unlock some privilege for them, which will help them to do more in yeah. the app, right? That's the resource thinking, exactly. Yeah, the resource thinking, yeah. But I like your sentence, uh, reframe rewards as resources. Yeah, it's it's by Roman Rakwitz, so it's fivefold R. So this is how you can remember it. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> wonderful. Thank you so much, Roman. Thank you for it's, having me. It was a pleasure. It's been a, it's been a wonderful discussion. I, I should say, I should actually thank you for not allowing me to prepare in advance for this conversation <laughs> <laughs> because uh, it would have been certainly less interesting. So thank you so much. And thank I thank you. all the audience who showed up today. Um, thank you for your time. And For all of the people who have asked questions, who have put messages in the chat window, thank you so much for your engagement and your attention. And uh, this will be recorded and this will be uploaded and it will be made available on YouTube and it will also show up on LinkedIn. So you can feel free to circulate this to other uh, friends of yours and, and anyone who finds it useful. With that, 
we bring this event to a close. I wish you a wonderful day and a week ahead. Enjoy. Thank you and bye-bye, Roman. Thank you for having me. Thanks, guys, for everything. Yeah. And yeah, also have, a, have an amazing week. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.